Would you observe the following scripture from Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 and 7? I thought it was appropriate for this Advent season. <clears throat> for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called the Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Let's pray. Father, for this marvelous day and the privilege to be a part of it, we give you thanks and praise for life, for health, for strength, for this organization that reminds us that those who you call to ministry, you call to the ministry of justice. Yes, yes, yes. For our chairperson and for our president, we give you thanks. For every presenter who has enriched us and stretched us this week, we're grateful. But my ancestors in Alabama would remind me that before I thank you for anything else, yeah, yeah, yeah. I ought to just thank you that last night All right, sir. was not my last night. Hallelujah. But here we are with the commission to hold the banner high for one more day. Would you bless our preacher that she shall break for us the bread of life? And then would you send us forth from this place, charged and revitalized to continue the work of righteousness and justice? Thank you for all you have done. That's what gives us our confidence that you'll be with us in the future. It's in Jesus' name we pray and believe. Yeah. Amen. 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 Our preacher for the morning is Bishop Teresa Jefferson Snorton. She's the 59th bishop and the first female bishop in the Christian Methodist Episcopal Church since its founding in 1870. Since 2011, she has served as bishop of the 5th Episcopal District, which includes the states of Alabama and Florida. <clears throat> She's the chair of the Board of Trustees of Mount College and the Ecumenical Officer and Endorsing Agent for the CME Church. Bishop Jefferson Snorton is President of Churches Uniting in Christ. She's the chair of the Family Life Committee of the World Methodist Council, a member of the Board of Directors of the World Methodist Evangelism Institute, and a member of the Central Committee of the World Council of Churches and a member of the, of the Pan Methodist Commission. She, of course, has been tremendously trained, Bachelor of Arts from Vanderbilt, Master of Divinity from Louisville Presbyterian, Master of Theology from Southern Baptist Theological Seminary, a postgraduate certificate in patient counseling from Virginia Commonwealth University, and a doctorate of ministry degree from United Theological. She is a member um, Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. Mm -hmm. Mr. Jefferson Snorton is a native of Kentucky and is married to the Reverend Lawrence Jefferson Snorton. And their blended family includes six sons, one daughter, three grandchildren. Before she preaches, our psalmist for the morning will be the Reverend Dr. Amariah McIntosh who's the pastor of Phillips Temple CME Church, Toledo, Ohio. In the tradition of the Methodist Church, will you stand now and receive her grace? Visit Teresa Jefferson Sporton.
returned from Jericho following Joshua's orders to check out the land and the city. These two spies had escaped being discovered with Rahab's help, and they gave their report to Joshua. In the second chapter of Joshua, verse 24, their hearts were bursting with joy when they told him the Lord has handed over this entire land to us. Yeah. Everyone who lives in the land is panicking because we are on the way. Right. This was the news that Joshua had been waiting for. And immediately he dispatched his officers to go throughout the camp, announcing that first thing in the morning, they would break camp. They would head to the tent, they would head to the banks of the Jordan and come to the entry point of the promised land. Here in chapter 3, we have a record of what happened. They started early the next morning, and from where they were in Acacia Grove, all the Israelites went as far as the Jordan. And there they camped at the river's edge. They had walked just a few miles over smooth ground, so we can assume that the trip did not take very long. And that with each step they took, the closer and closer they came to their goal. The buzz began. Ah, oh, today's the day. We stand on the brink of a dream. We come to the place that our forefathers longed for. But we won't blow it this time. <laughs> They felt they had found their pathway okay. to home. But as they approached the River Jordan, they discovered that it created a barrier between them and their longed-for real estate. Mm -hmm. They saw by the light of day once they got to the Jordan something that must have been both confusing and dreadful. Because the text tells us that the Jordan was uncrossable. My mind. There's a simple sentence in chapter 2, verse 15, that gives us a picture. It says, now the Jordan overflowed its banks mm. during harvest season. Right. And the gentle Jordan was a raging river, swelled to flood stage. What's more, all around the river was a dense plain with bush and growth. And so it was not just the river, but also the jungle all right. that they would have to go yeah, yeah. to right. get right. where they were going. Chapter 3, verse 1 tells us that when they came to the Jordan, following God's instructions from Joshua 1.11, they stayed there three days. Three days. All that time, three days, all the people saw was a rushing river. All that time, for three days, all they saw was a swollen river with spring rain. Yeah. Right. yeah. They must have asked themselves, how can we ever cross this river? Out, well, out. Camping by the Jordan. They had to face up to their own helplessness. Well, right? well, well. It was one thing for a few spies to make their way across. Mm. But now we're talking about a nation of millions, including women and children and babies and all their possessions. How will they make it? How? Can't you imagine their despair and hopelessness that began to set in? Can't you imagine the disillusionment that began to infect their thinking? Can't you imagine how impossible it all seemed? Imagine how dark and dismal it appeared to them. Okay. Okay. Well, At a moment like this, all the wonderful talk about living in the promised land seemed impossible. <laughs> it seems like an obstacle blocking the way. The question was, how will God do this? Well, yeah. How can there be any bright hope for tomorrow? Mm -hmm. right. Well, I think when it comes to issues of racism, we know how this feels. Okay. After all, since 1865, with the signing of the Pro Emancipation Proclamation, our ancestors have felt the promise of freedom, mm -hmm. only to receive in return the sting of a corrupt reconstruction. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. ignore the fortune the bell. Yeah. Our ancestors walked toward a future of self-determination. Mm -hmm. Only to find a wall of Jim Crow. Right. Yeah. Our ancestors went to the voting booths only to discover jars of beans that had to be counted. My man. A total regard for the 15th Amendment. They worked to be their best God given selves only to be rewarded with lynchings and the burnings of their business. Say that. Say that. Today, as we have traversed these United States of America, since the signing of the Civil Rights Act in 1965, we only discover that affirmative action is ridiculed, reparations.
reparations can't even get on the table. Mm. The Supreme Court guts the voting rights bill yes. and discrimination. Well, done, I'm done, done. By unjust laws. Mm -hmm. ah, so called tax reform. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ah. And hate runs rampant in our cities. Yes. And seats of government. I can imagine that the Israelites felt that every time their hopes would rise, something would stomp on it. I'm there. I'm out. Like the Red Sea. Mm hmm. In the desert with no food in the wilderness for 40 years, mm -hmm. and now on the banks of a river too swollen to cross. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I'm reminded when I think of them and when I think of our own experience of James Weldon Johnson's words from Lift Every Voice and Say, uh -huh. uh -huh. Stony the road we Stony, stony. Yeah. 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 the chastening rod. Yeah. Felt in the days with hope unborn yeah. that died. Yeah. 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 Oh, truly, we have come over a way that with tears yeah. have been brought. Yeah. We have come, yeah. come on, man. Come on. treading our path through the blood of the slaughter. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. See, there on the banks, hope couldn't even be born uh -huh. before it had died. Mm. Uh, hope couldn't take hold before it got slaughtered. Uh -huh. The path watered with tears, the path stained with the blood of our ancestors. It seemed as if there was one step forward and two steps back. Here we go, round in circles. Yeah. Here, uh, here we go. Here we go. Although uh -huh. the language has changed. Yes, sir. And we less frequently are referred to as boy or gal. Well, or call the N-word out in the open. We live in a day when the highest leader in the land calls our young men sons of peace. Mm. He calls black women donkeys. Yeah. Like the Israelites, we ought to be asking, where is the bright hope yeah. for tomorrow? Uh -huh. Because like the Israelites, we have been waiting, waiting by the banks. Yeah. But like the prophet reminds us, they that wait on the Lord. Yes, sir. Yes. See, when the sun came up, uh -huh. Joshua sent the officers through the camp. Yeah. Yeah, right. And they told the people, when you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord, and when you see the priest <laughs> carrying uh -huh. it, uh -huh. set out from your place and uh -huh. go uh -huh. Joshua didn't send a bunch of engineers. <laughs> He sent the priest. Wow. Wow. The visible representation of God's presence with the people, the priest wow. bearing the ark, because Joshua knew that crossing the Jordan was a spiritual problem. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Mm. Now, All right. That's good. Yeah. All right. The people had yeah. also. Yeah. And Joshua instructed the people to follow the priest uh -huh. in order to rediscover and reclaim their home. Yeah. So today I say to our CNBC, if there's going to be a bright hope for tomorrow, oh, yeah, yeah. and for the day after that, and for the year after go that, ahead, and for the next ahead. decade, yeah. and the next century, mm. it's the priest. Three. It's the preachers. Yeah. It's the rabbi. Ah. Yeah. It's the imam. Ah. Yeah. It's the church. Yeah. The synagogue. Mm. Yeah. The mosque. Yeah. We must lead the way. That's right. See, the community of faith should stand out and be so visible people know who they ought to be following. Yeah, yeah. The community of faith, the priests, the preachers, the rabbis, the imam must take up the blood stained there. Yeah. And not jump until victory is done. Yeah. The community of faith must declare that we won't let anybody turn us around. Yeah. In recent years, there have been far too many posts on Facebook asking, where is the church? Uh -huh. Where are the preachers every time a black or brown body falls? Ooh. From a policeman. Uh, See, the priests were able to lead the people from impossibility into the promised land. Mm -hmm. Because they possessed the Ark of the Covenant, uh -huh. the symbolic presence of God. And today, the community of faith can claim the inheritance of God's promises that He would never leave us nor forsake us. Yeah. We have been standing still. Mm. Are marching in place far too long. Yeah, that's right. We have become comfortable in Babylon when we ought to be crying out. Ooh. But God has given us the keys to the kingdom, the power of a resurrected Jesus, mm -hmm. and the presence of the Holy Spirit. That's right. This season of Advent radiates the presence of God through the birth of Emmanuel, which means God with us. Uh -huh. So to have a great hope for tomorrow, yeah. the church must lead the way. Okay. Yeah. After waiting, it's time to start walking. Uh -huh. yeah. Walking into the future that we have longed for. Yeah. Walking into the future that God has promised.
And so he knew that the people needed to have spiritual preparation. So he said, sanctify yourself. Separate yourselves from common things to focus on the Lord and, and began to see that the Lord will do wonders. Rid yourself of negative thinking. Rid yourself of stinking thinking. Rid yourself uh -huh. of a grasshopper mentality. Uh -huh. Rid yourself of a always be rhetoric. Rid yourself yeah, of yeah. all those things that keep you yeah. from Amen. being pure yeah. of the Lord. Mm. Yeah. 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 Modern sanctification seems to modern sanctification in order to unearth the effects of racism means that we must do something less. All right. Uh -huh. Sanctify ourselves. Mm -hmm. Confess how we were back in God's way. Mm. Confess how we followed our own will. Confess how we become unconcerned about the least of uh -huh. Confess how we become more judgmental about those that's the largest. Confess how we've fallen in love with the flowery beds of ease in our cathedral. Mm. Confess how we love our tabernacles and temples. Oh, yeah. how we love our Lord. Confess oh, yeah. how we love the green leaf great choirs that sing songs on Sunday. Confess how Second Chronicles tells us if we would just humble ourselves and confess our sins, that God would heal the land. And so Joshua said, sanctify yourself. The song that I referenced earlier says, pardon us for sin, O Lord, so we can have a peace that endures, a peace that passes understanding. You see, today's word is that we must shed ourselves of anything that is not like God. We must re embrace the few truths of the Spirit. Uh -huh. we, have, uh, we, have, we must rid ourselves of the spoils of capitalism, consumerism, and materialism. We must sanctify ourselves uh -huh. so we can get back to the main thing yeah. as expressed by Jesus. Yeah. He said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Yeah. He has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. Yeah. He has sent us to proclaim release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to set the oppressed at liberty and to proclaim the year of the Lord. Yeah. But to do this, the anointing has to be on clean hearts All right. yeah. and clean hands. Yeah. Renewed spirits yeah. that have been washed. So today, church, it's time for us to sanctify ourselves mm -hmm. and put on the full armor of God, get back to the battlefield. Yeah. For on the battlefield, there's hate. Yeah, yeah. On the battlefield, there's oppression. Mm. Yeah. On the battlefield, there is racism. Mm -hmm. God, we have washed away our own iniquities. God can do wondrous things yeah, yeah. in our midst. Mm -hmm. So here in the text, we find the Israelites who had waited. The officers who told them to walk okay. and to worship. Mm -hmm. Well, Joshua who told them to watch. But you really got to read past the fifth verse that I stopped mm -hmm. at to discover the power of the text. Okay. Yeah. If you read past verse five, if you read those first five verses, you will discover that up until that point, it had just been taught. Okay. Yeah. All right. Joshua was talking. <laughs> Yeah. The officer was talking. Uh -huh. Instructions were given yeah, yeah. on how to make it across the chasm of the Jordan that separated them from the promised mm -hmm. yeah. But in verse 6. six. Yeah. But in verse 6. six. But in verse 6. Come on, come on. Joshua tells the priest, now get up. Get up. Yeah. Take up the ark. Uh -huh. And start walking. Uh -huh. Get up. Yeah. Take up the ark. Uh -huh. And yeah. start moving. Mm -hmm. You see, this sermon I'm preaching is just a lot of talk. Uh -huh. This conference is helping us to know the issues and create the strategies, but we have to take the next step. Yeah. We have to take action. Yeah. We have to step out in faith. Uh -huh. We have to trust God to order our steps. Uh -huh. After we have waited, and after we have walked, and after we have worshipped, and after we have washed, we've got to do the work. Uh -huh. We are like those four lepers sitting outside the gate in 2 Kings 7. Uh -huh. We said to one another, why should we sit here yeah, yeah. until we die? Yeah. You see, the family, yeah. the hate, yeah. the racism, might yeah. be in the city. Come on, and we could yeah. die there. Yeah. But if we just sit here, yeah. 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 there will always be. Yeah. 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 If we just keep doing it, yeah. Yeah. there will always be. Yeah. 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 If we just keep looking around, we're uh -huh. wondering who's going to do it. Yeah. Yeah. We will surely die. Yeah. 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 And if it's not us, then the countless victims of hate and racism 